How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. In the palm of my hand is an Ace Magic Mini PC with an Intel Core i9 12900H, model number AD09. And you might be wondering, how much does it cost? Right now on their website, they're going for $645. If you look at mini PCs, anything that contains an i9 core processor is gonna be at least five, $600. So the pricing is pretty competitive and you're paying a little bit for these fancy RGB lights everywhere. It's definitely not a full-fledged gaming system, but definitely very good for college students on a budget. Laptops can cost around $1,500 to $2,000, so you can get away with spending less than half of that on this mini PC. It comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, so all you need is a monitor, keyboard, and a mouse. A 16 gigabyte of memory here, the other 16, so 32 total, and the 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. There's an extra slot over here for a SATA SSD. I like the honeycomb structure here. There's two magnets and two hooks here to hold it in place. Just hook it in and it sticks. On the other side, I can't really pull it open. There's a Kensington lock port to keep your PC safe, DC 19 volt input, a one gigabit ethernet port, two HDMI 2.0s that can support up to 4K 60 Hertz, two USB 3.0 that can support up to 20 gigabits per second. You have an audio in and out, two more USB 3.2 with up to 20 gigabits per second, a 20 gigabit type C port that can also support another monitor 4K 60 Hertz. On the top, there's a silent mode to reduce fan noise or a performance mode for gaming. This is the 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. There are these bands here that holds the heat sink in place. It's a Ryzen M.2 2280 PCI Express Gen 4 times 4. Underneath we have Kingston chips. Let's take this further apart. Here's a bracket to hold the SSD in. Here in this box there are holes over here and the intake is on these two holes that goes into these two fans with the heatsink over here. They use the cool guy stuff, the black PCB, so that's neat. And we have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card over here. The heatsink fins are very fine. They're more closely spaced than a lot of heatsinks I've seen in graphics cards. There are two heat pipes going to the heat sinks. There's also some heat transfer foam here. Ooh comes right off. Very nice copper piping. There's another copper piping right here after it comes from the CPU that might help to kind of distribute the heat across this heatsink. There it is in all its glory, the motherboard. AD08 version 11, 2023-0207. There's also a little battery here to keep the memory active. In terms of weight, this is probably the heaviest thing out of the entire PC. When you've seen enough, you put it back. The RAM has RGB LEDs on both of them and that's where they really peak out right there let's plug it in to see it's standby power nothing so 0.9 watts just for sitting there oh it powers off that's really great let's hear the startup sounds nothing i can hear so far the startup sequence it's at 14 watts right now let's go english us us keyboard skip accept Francis. Now you got security question. Now it has a startup sequence. This is more of a Windows 11 Pro thing. It needs to start things up. Okay, now we're in. Add a device, Bluetooth. Here it is, MX Vertical, connect to it. And we're wirelessly connected. We have a total of 415 gigabytes of usable storage, 60 gigabytes already used by the operating system. Intel 12th Gen Core i9 12900H, 2.5 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is plenty for most things that you need to do, including some light gaming. It doesn't have too much bloatware. I see this thing though. This allows you to change the RGB RGB lighting color scheme. We can do auto mode, turn off the lights. The RGB lights on the RAM stays on even though you turn off the lights. You do have two rows over here. Let's do rainbow. Breathe. Now it's kind of orangey. Now it's kind of yellow. Now it's green. Now cycle through. If you have the app up, you can turn it on silent mode and this little icon will come up, say silent, auto, 
or performance. But if you close the app and you do the same thing, that little icon doesn't actually pop up. However, the performance will change. The internal GPU is an integrated Iris Xe graphics. You don't have a dedicated graphics processor. Let's take a look in there. All those LEDs. It's pretty energy efficient. I'm downloading three things, updating Steam, getting a benchmark software, and it's only using 44, 50 watts or so. On their website, one of the pictures shows i9 11900H and it has eight core 16 threads. This is not true. The latest processor that they put in it is an i9 12. 900h this is a 14 core 20 threads processor regardless of the number of cores let's see how well the cpu benchmark does i'm downloading a lot of stuff onto this putting the mic next to it and if i turn it on silent it tries to turn off those fans in performance mode 65 watts with a lot of downloading. Keep in mind that the intake is through the left side panel and the exhaust is through this side over here. That means you should not be laying it flat like this or else it cannot breathe. You could possibly lean it this way, but then you cannot see the LEDs on this side. I'm running a screen recorder at the same time, so it might slow things down slightly. However, I found Grand Theft Auto 5 to work just fine. Oh, it's a 2.4, cool. I kind of want one of these in real life, actually. I hear it's really hard to repair. Like, it's the parts that are really hard to obtain because it's mostly a European car and they discontinued it. So even though you want a tiny little car to ride around, putting around in, it's not good to buy this thing. Oh, incoming call. Okay, now we got some daylight. You can see the graphics a little bit better here. It's high def 1920 by 1200 right now. Let's run the CPU benchmark. Single core score of 2327, multi-core of 9039. Now I'm gonna set it on silent mode and run the CPU benchmark again. Single core reduced in performance by about 10%. However, multi-core actually increased in performance 10% going to silent mode. Performance shows a 9.5% increase for single core 9.4% increase for multi-core. Looking at the range of processors available on the market right now, the Core i9-13900KS gets a score of 21,828. So this i9 being 9,800 is about half as powerful. If we scroll down to look at what is equivalent to, we're looking at that it's somewhat equivalent to an Core i7-12700T. With that said, let's do a GPU benchmark on the performance mode. Open CL score of 14,269. Let's compare to other scores. And NVIDIA RTX 4080 has 240K. A bit unfair to compare to a really, really hot dedicated GPU. Let's scroll down to see what it's comparable to 14,000. Oh, that's really low. I gotta scroll quite a ways down here. 14,269. It's equivalent to a Radon R9 or a GeForce GTX 965M. So there you go. GPU, only simple games or older games on medium quality or lower. And you have to play it on just HD. You can't bump it up further than that. The internal PCI Express Gen 3.0 can do 3.5 gigabytes per second. The SSD is hooked up to that and so the read speed doing the benchmark is 3.66 gigabytes per second. How is it going over? The write speed is 2.4 gigabytes per second. This is lickety split very very fast. That's why the game loads so quickly. Overall pretty decent score for an MBME solid state drive. The entire PC weighs just shy of two pounds. This is lighter than a lot of laptops actually. So of course it doesn't have a display nor keyboard or mouse, but you also have to add the power adapter, which itself is one pound, three ounces. Together, it weighs three pounds, 2.5 ounces. Overall, I think it's a budget-friendly option for college students. If you're just working on reports, surfing the internet, looking at YouTube, it's much cheaper than a laptop. And if you really want to, you can play some older games. It'll do the job with a pretty recent two-year-old processor. If you're interested in getting one of these, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.